Welcome back. So in this supplement, we're going to talk about two topics, ordinal versus nominal data, as well as clipping. So let me share my screen. And here is the intro slide. So why do we bother making the distinction between ordinal versus nominal? Well, the reason is that with ordinal, there is an ordering amongst the data. So whether you're looking at months or year, small, medium, and large, um, you know, bachelor's, master's, PhD, there's an ordering uh, in all those kinds of things. And the idea is, is we want to keep that ordering information when we translate it into a numeric value. And the reason why we wanna do that is so a machine learning algorithm can leverage that ordering information when it makes predictions or classification or, you know, or whatever other task it's supposed to do. So let's give an example of some nominal data. So here we have an example data frame. Entry is just the primary key or the row number. And we have fruit, one of three types of fruit. And we can take that fruit and we can go from a single column to multiple columns where we now we have a numeric value that uh, each column is associated with one type of that data. So banana, for example. So for the first entry, uh, the entry was banana. So the banana column gets one and the rest get zero. Same thing with apple. Only the apple column gets a one. The other two get a zero. Notice that for each entry, there is exactly one column that has a value of one. And we've encoded these elements of this set of banana, apple, orange. Now, this is often called one-hot encoding. And this idea comes up again in deep neural networks when we deal with language models, because the idea is that you want to encode words in a dictionary in a vector representation. So here our dictionary is very small, banana, apple, and orange, and we've encoded it um, in a vector representation. And so the same thing applies for whether you're doing feature-based or featureless in this case, because either way, if you're dealing with data of this type, you need to have some kind of um, you know, uh, a quantifiable representation. So now let's look what happens when we take ordinal data. So here we have months of the year and we treat it like nominal. So here's again, our one hot encoding. Now, one thing to note is with the data frame, I should be able to rearrange those columns and it'll make no difference. Here, if I do that, um, you know, clearly I lose the information that February is uh, after January and that February is before March and April. So this is wrong because I've lost that information. Machine learning models do not consider the order of the uh, of the columns or the features unless I do something to expressly tell it to. And so that's why we have to consider this as a different type of data. Knowing that it's ordinal knows that, hey, it's more than just that these are different elements of a set. There is an ordering amongst them and I wish to capture that information. And the thing with machine learning is we don't, we want to avoid making those decisions ourselves as humans. We want to turn it over to the training algorithm to make those decisions for us if that ordering information is important. So there's very little reason not to treat an ordinal data as the right type of data. And so, and if we do, if we treat ordinal data as nominal data, we lose that ordering information and a machine learning algorithm cannot leverage information that we don't give it. So let's look at doing this in a more correct way. And here we're just assigning the ordinal values with a number um, based on when the month occurs in the year. And so, you know, here we have a correct version of this. Now notice we can't do this for nominal data because of the exact opposite thing. If we said there was an ordering between apple and banana, and we uh, just gave it a number where apple is one and banana is two, now we're implying to the model that, hey, um, for some reason, apple is uh, always has to occur after banana which of course makes no sense, but then our model would learn something 
based on this arbitrary ordering. And that would be something we would not want to happen. So this is why it's very important to understand the difference between nominal and ordinal data. In one case where we use the one hot encoding, it's actually important not to induce an order when it doesn't exist. But when one does exist, we want to do something like what we have here on the slide. This also, this idea of maintaining the order of elements also comes up in another part of deep neural networks called the transformer architecture, where inherently the architecture uses what's called an embedding to encode the ordering of elements in a sequence, like words in a sentence. And if you don't do that step, in the transformer architecture, instead of taking a sentence and say, translating it into another language, it now has just kind of a jumble of words that have no ordering associated with it. So again, this is a key idea I wanna to communicate to everyone in that if there is some kind of order in the data, uh, we need to directly uh, specify that to our machine learning models. So the next topic is clipping, and clipping is simply not allowing values to be greater than or less than a certain range. And we're not necessarily going to use anything like mean or standard deviation. You just know what that range of values is that you want to clip to, and you set anything below the minimum to the minimum, anything above the maximum to the maximum. So let's go through a quick example here. So here again, we have a little data frame with five uh, rows. And these are maybe test scores, maybe the range is between zero and 100. Let's see what happens when we clip that to the range 50, 80. So the value 60, 59, and 70, they don't change because all these values are within the range between 50 and 80. However, 99 is above the max, that goes to 80. 40 is below the minimum, so that goes to 50. The idea of clipping is also important in deep neural networks, but in a little bit different way. There's this thing called gradient clipping, where we use this exact same technique, but to clip a gradient uh, during the training process to avoid what's called the exploding gradient problem that could cause um, you know, our learning process to halt or go haywire. So anyway, I hope you um, found this supplement useful. Uh, just wanted to um, cover a few extra things or reinforce some things that I think were important. Um, feel free to send us uh, a message on Canvas if you have any further questions on this topic. Thank you very much. Bye now.